Welcome to the podcast. If you'd like to listen to an ad-free version of this episode and all of our episodes, then search True Crime Today Premium Plus on Apple Podcasts and press subscribe. That's our premium channel where all of our ad-free and advanced episodes live all in one place. True Crime Today Premium Plus. Search it on Apple Podcasts and press subscribe. Even try it for three days free. They thought it was the perfect crime until the body was found. You're listening to Hidden Killers with Tony Bruschi, featuring psychotherapist and author Siobhan Scott. Well, and Eric Menendez going to get another day in court, a day in court where they may walk out of court, not back into a prison system, but out into freedom and society. Very possibly that that could be happening before Christmas. Joining me to discuss, Siobhan Scott, psychotherapist and author. Of course, this case goes back to uh, to the 80s. 1989 is when the murder actually uh, took place. Brothers claiming that they acted out of fear and endured years of sexual abuse at the hand of their father, Lyle Menendez. In light of uh, new evidence, including letters from the brothers, uh, and uh, also a uh, new testimony from former members of Menudo talking about the abuse that they suffered at the hands of Lyle Menendez is uh, where we're at uh, today. Uh, Siobhan, what's your thoughts on all this as we get uh, closer to that November date where the judge can make a pretty dramatic ruling in this case? I, I think with all the evidence that we have at this point, everybody is pretty much on the same page. At least that's everything I've been able to read and watch, um, that it needs to be relooked at and reexamined. And we know a lot more about trauma and the effects on people than we knew back then. I think therapists knew. We certainly treated it, but it wasn't out in the popular culture. And certainly the fact that boys can be molested and, you know, victimized sexually, that was not understood in the popular culture. And we do understand that now. So I, I think everybody's on board with this is the right thing to do. And I would agree. I think it's the right thing to do. Now, we always like our our um, characters and stories we tell to be clearly either the good guys or the bad guys. Mm -hmm. And that makes a nice, neat story. And this is one of those cases where it's more complicated than that. Very much so. Uh, I mean, we're not arguing whether they did it or not. We know they did it. They've admitted to doing it. They've said why they did yeah. it. And the fact now that they could be uh, facing release. Let's talk about it a little bit. I mean, we're not talking ancient history here. We're talking, you know, roughly 30 years ago uh, when the, these initial charges were brought down that they would be spending uh, the rest of their lives uh, in prison. Um, why, why was it such a different world back then where society, uh, we're talking society who experienced this sort of stuff, but I just didn't talk about this sort mm -hmm. of stuff. There's plenty of men at that point in time who can say that they were abused. I mean, horribly mm -hmm. uh, sexually. Mm -hmm. The Catholic Church, so that was a big thing at that moment in time where mm -hmm. all of that was coming out. Nobody really wanted to talk about it from a male perspective. People still don't like to talk about that stuff from, mm -hmm. from a male perspective. Why has it always been such a taboo subject to just say, look, this happened to me. Uh, you know, you're not alone over here from having to do, deal with this. You're not alone. Uh, other people have dealt with this and, and you know, you can live a decent life, um, but we need to hold those people accountable. We really were in a world where we really harbored abusers and 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 just didn't want to hear reality from anyone because it, it really just shocked our, our brain to think that these people that we think should be at this pedestal are really way the hell down here. Why were we mm -hmm. like that? It wasn't long ago. No, it really wasn't long ago. And and so much has changed. You know, even in when I was a little kid growing up and I would watch the old reruns of I Love Lucy, Lucy and, and Desi slept in separate beds. Mm -hmm. You know, they had the side by side twin beds. And and so our, our views about sexuality and our ability to talk about anything involving sex has changed dramatically. You compare what kids see on TV now to what I saw when I was a kid growing up. I sure. mean, it is it is entirely different. And so I think we have a, a much more open and accepting culture to talking about everything, including abuse. Child abuse, even going into the 80s, wasn't really openly discussed and understood. You know, that was something that only happened in certain kinds of homes or certain kinds of families. And so it was hidden 
you know, to a very great extent. And I remember when we started talking about that more openly, that was in the 80s too. Mm -hmm. So I think it's just evolved over time to a very different culture than what we used to have. Is it because we've created a safer environment for people to talk about these things before it was very, oh, talk about that. Um, now there's there's so many people talking about it that it, it's it's a world where we feel a lot easier, more at ease to to share our stories. Whereas back then, uh, you know, I'm going to guess uh, the Jose Menendez was probably abused as well. Um, just yeah. wild guess. Um, but I'm sure that's something he wouldn't talk about. Is it because people would have to take a really good look at themselves and the shit that they went through and they were not capable of doing that or didn't want to do that? Or then sometimes would repeat those same sort of things, which is probably what Jose Menendez was doing. Um, and it was just too difficult to, I don't know, break the pattern, break the cycle. I don't know why it was, but it was because there just wasn't a society out there that was saying, let's break this. Let's stop this. You don't have to right. do this. But it was almost right. like you're expected to do this because that's how you were raised. And this is what we do. Exactly. Yeah, this ri rigid idea of what good people were supposed to be like. Mm -hmm. And you were either, again, going back to those simplistic categories, good or bad. Mm -hmm. Good families, you didn't have mental illness. Yeah. Bad families had mental illness, you know. And so growing up, I had an aunt with schizophrenia who came and lived with us for a time. She was uh, vilified and looked at as this lesser moral person. Nobody understood that she had schizophrenia wasn't until much later in her life when she went into an institution. But nobody got her therapy. That was for crazy people or bad people. You know, she got no treatment. She got no help. And so I think when it comes to these, these areas where we would look at, you know, just normal human problems, things that happen, it was, it was this judgment that was put on, on that. And so everybody wanted to give this appearance of normalcy you know, and being good people. And so it it kept the lid on all sorts of things. Now, all kinds of people go to therapy. It's not looked at as a character mm -hmm. flaw. In fact, in most, most parts of the world, it's looked at as a virtue. You're interested in personal growth. It's a yeah. positive. You want to be a better parent. You want to be a better partner. Partner. You're learning. You're growing. Um, but it didn't used to be that way. It used to be just this very, very good people, bad people, and nobody wanted to acknowledge that they had any struggles or difficulties because it would put them in the, the bucket of the bad people. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you this, and this is just conjecture um, and, you know, just looking out there into the future. We're, I mean, essentially we're at the infancy of a lot of understanding these sort of things from the way that we do today. Uh, very different than 30 years ago. 30 years from now down the road, are we going to be in that same sort of place where we look back at how we handle things today as being different? Um, and we could have done so much better, but we didn't see, you know, the trees before the forest as we do right now. Um, are we going to see a difference in how we look at things today? And, and are we going to see maybe a decrease in some of these things because people early on realized that these sort of things were wrong and, and maybe some cycles were broken along I think the big revolution is going to come with brain science. Uh, you know, we know so much more in the, the past 20 years about why things go wrong with people. You know, you and I have talked about head injuries mm -hmm. and the impact on people's criminal behavior from head injuries. Well, we, we're barely beginning to understand why mm -hmm. and how childhood experiences and neurochemistry work together to set someone up either for a successful life or sometimes a life of crime. Mm -hmm. And if Truly, there were things that were wrong with people neurologically. Can we find it sooner? Can we intervene sooner? And I think we're going to be looking back on how we handle things now and say, boy, they were really in the dark ages. They didn't know what they were doing back then. Welcome to the podcast. If you'd like to listen to an ad-free version of this episode and all of our episodes, then search True Crime Today Premium Plus on Apple Podcasts and press subscribe. That's our premium channel where all of our ad-free and advanced episodes live all in one place. True Crime Today Premium Plus. Search it on Apple Podcasts and press subscribe. Even try it for three days free. You're neck deep in a dark, twisted tale. And just as the tension peaks, bam, a commercial about some miracle diet pill breaks the spell. It's like finding a fly in your soup after the first bite. But here's the fix. 
True Crime Today Premium Plus on Apple Podcasts. You get to enjoy your crime stories without the junk, ad-free episodes, extended interviews that go beyond the surface, and early access to all the gruesome details. It's like swapping out a can of cheap beer for a glass of fine whiskey. So search for True Crime Today Premium Plus on Apple Podcasts. Subscribe and keep the darkness flowing uninterrupted.